Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Hi everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Silik, and we've got an exciting show in store for you this week with all sorts of hunting action. Hunting seasons are finally here and on this week's show we're going to show you an early season goose hunt and Jimmy and Jordan have some other excitement in store for us. Well that's right Jenny, we do have quite a few hunting adventures on this week's show. We're actually going to kick things off with a father and daughter bear hunt from the Baldwin unit. Very cool story there, you won't want to miss that. We're going to visit with our friends from MUCC and learn a little bit more about the camp grayling expansion and how that affects you as a sportsman. And this past weekend was the youth deer season so we got hundreds and hundreds of photos coming in to us here of successful hunters. We're going to just show you a fraction of those on our bragging board. So lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors What a beautiful day in the woods Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy The wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees the sweet smell of nature's in the air from the great lakes to the quiet stream shining like a sportsman's dream it's a love of michigan we all share michigan out of doors is presented by by country smokehouse a sportsman's meat processor and michigan destination since 1988 offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and michigan made products in store and online the Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at greenmarkequipment.com. By G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime bows, manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan. G5 offers a line of archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at g5outdoors.com. This moment brought to you by DTE's Clean Vision. Tucked away just outside of Baldwin is the family camp of Adam Ingalls. These guys are in the Baldwin Bear Unit, and Josie, Adam's 11-year-old daughter, has a bear tag. And a bear tag can mean a lot of work. So a few weeks before the opening weekend, I was here to tag along on a bait run. And where'd you get this? All you, where'd you get this stuff from? Um, this different suppliers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Marty, the guy out of Big Rapids, he he gets all of that from somewhere in Wisconsin. Okay. And then the bread, um, I've been getting that from Nate, but I also get it at a bread store as well. Hmm. It's just, it's all expired. And how often do you have to bait a bait to keep it active up till season? Right now it's taken, so if I put four buckets out, it's gone within two days. Hmm. So I've been trying to, I like to run few less bait more often than putting a lot of bait out at once. Okay. So yeah. that that's really seemed to keep them coming in and then they come in before dark. Otherwise, they'll just sit there all day and eat the bait and come in at dark and lounge around. And hmm. Tell me what you got there. Well, it's a super soaker with uh, water and uh, I don't know what's in this one, butterscotch? Or wow. blueberry. Blueberry, blueberry scent. In the super soaker. Yeah, we spray up in the trees and it really gets the scent wafting. Wow. 
Yes, that's right, a super soaker. What will folks think of next? So after loading up, it was time to head to one of Adam's bait sites. He'd started with several, but whittled it down to two spots. I wanted to find somewhere where there wasn't a two track, you know, where I wanted to get where nobody else is. It's a bit of a walk, but it's um, most of the time when I'm looking for a spot, I lay in bed and I'm on Onyx searching for hours and I'll find and mark a couple and then Jason and I'll come up and we'll go check them out. We got in and out fairly quickly, dumping our four buckets and putting a few final touches on the pile. Now one thing that folks do is cover the bait with a lot of logs and sticks as well in hopes of keeping some smaller critters out of the bait. Why do you cover it up like that? Keeps the raccoons out of it. it keeps the deer from eating the grain. It mostly helps make your bait last longer because they have to dig for it and, you know, dig it out. Gotcha. Doing this a few times a week is a ton of work, but the payoff can be worth it. The opener arrived and I headed north to meet up for the evening hunt. The bait I had been to was a bit sporadic, but the bait that we were on here today was pretty steady, so we went in with high hopes. We had been in the blind four hours and one of the bears was here. They can be incredibly silent when they want to be. Lucky for us, we saw him coming. We really only had one good place to shoot and that was at the bait. But like most things in the hunting world, stuff doesn't usually go as planned. The bear wanted to go to the bait, but also knew something wasn't quite right. He started to head to the bait, but then would take a few steps back the way he had come in. The setup in the blind, well, it wasn't good for him coming in to our left hand side. So we waited. And we waited some more for the bear to make up his mind. But he wasn't moving much, so we started to move Josie and her gun to maybe get far enough to the left to get the bear in her sights. Good thing for us, he was stopped and at points actually looked to be sitting down. We were slowly able to get Josie pointed at the bear. I took the camera off the tripod in hopes of capturing this all on camera. It seemed we had pulled off our move. So with the gun now moved, Josie leaned in and picked a lane through the trees to make the shot. That's the biggest bear I've ever seen. Well, to say Adam was a little excited would be an understatement. All of us were on edge, and we slowly moved up to where the bear was at the shot. We quickly found some good blood and pulled out to get help, some lights, and really just to calm down a bit. The track job was pretty easy, and we found the bear less than 75 yards away. Hey! hey. Good job, Jose! Look at the size of that bear! Holy cow! Oh. <laughs> yeah. He's pretty big. <laughs> Whoa. Nice job, young lady. Good job, Josie. Hey. Nice job. <laughs> what do you say, Dad? Thank you. That was a lot of work, but it was worth it, though. Tell me what happened here, Anna. Well, it came in, and it locked up, and it was an emotional roller coaster <laughs> for quite some time. Wow. Look at the size of this paws. We had a, uh, that was an exciting night, I, I know that. Uh, we sat there and sat there, everyone was getting restless and uh, patience paid off on this one. <laughs> it was an emotional roller coaster, wasn't it? Yeah. He knew where we were. Yeah, 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 he knew exactly what was going on. I mean, it's, it's a big bear. Well, how much work went into baiting this guy? Oh, quite a bit. Uh, 
I mean, there's a lot of money involved <laughs> with this, so we weren't we're walking out of the woods without a bear. How many days a week? Well, how often did you bait? Well, it started uh, twice a week, and then we went to four times a week on top of working full time and everything else. It was this has been my life every day. And had you been watching this bear for a long time before you? Yeah, he's been coming in for what the last month, La no, probably the last 20 days. But I bet he put I bet he put 20 pounds on in the last 20 days too. Yeah, yeah I has, has he been coming in about the same time every day? Close, similar, He's similar a late to today. A little bit late today. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, I, honestly, I couldn't have done it all by myself. I had a lot of help from Matt, Joe, Thomas, Jason, um, Britt. Uh, we had a lot of help on this one. What a hunt. It's one that this father and daughter, well, they will never forget. What a state we have, and how great to see the love of hunting getting passed from generation to generation. Thanks to the Ingalls for letting me tag along on a hunt to remember here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, if you watched the show last week, you got to see what the opening day of the early goose season looked like in southern mid-Michigan. Well, we've got another really cool hunt coming to you from West Michigan. Just silhouettes. We got some, some big owls, some pangle freeze, some dive bombs, a little bit of everything. Try and get some family groups in here and hopefully they like it. It's looking pretty good out here. We got some good birds in the field. Um, they've been in it constant, around the area constantly. Um, we'll see how it goes, yeah. It's early goose, you never know. Our crew here in Muskegon County was on birds first thing. These guys are all buddies and couldn't wait for the opening morning to arrive. I got one shot off. <laughs> I'm I'm two. Two. Huh? I got two. We got all of them, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, I, didn't I was positive. trying. I'm more positive I did. You guys okay with that call? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Look at them. They're all dead. <laughs> I fucking come here. I turned my hand over. Give him a hand. Drink Our up. first volley was pretty successful, dropping quite a few birds. There was a little fog this morning, but the sun would quickly burn it off. There is just something about the first day of the early goose season. It just feels like the kickoff of fall, and it helps when there are a lot of birds around as well. <laughs> Some of these guys have been waterfowling for years, but I think Hunter might take the cake for starting off at such a young age. I've been hunting waterfowl since I was three years old. My dad used to take me when I was a kid. Uh, we used to field hunt a lot in the thumb, and then uh, we moved over to this side of the state hunting divers, and it's been, a, been since I was three. There were quite a few birds in the air today. Some committed perfectly to the spread of decoys, but some of them worked the edges, and after a swing or two headed to a nearby field. I think 
I started when I was 13. 28 now. So quite a while. Started out behind my dad's farm. And started asking more farmers and got more yas and just enjoying life out in the goose fields. <laughs> Didn't go 20? <laughs> and guess what? We got a band, boys. Good way to start opening. Early season scouting is key on a hunt like this, and Kenny and his buddies spend literally weeks leading up to the opener and beyond scouting for fields. As farmers cut the crops, birds find those fields. So as a waterfowler, well, you're watching the farmer sometimes as much as watching for birds. What do you got in your beard? A little bit of feather. You gotta act like a goose if you're gonna kill a goose. <laughs> How many birds do you think we've seen today? Yeah, all of. Maybe even more. A couple, couple hundred. Probably, yeah, 250 ish. Good opening day, average? Above average. Thanks to Hunter, Kenny, Trevor, Zach, and Sean for letting us tag along on the opener here in West Michigan. Early goose season can be filled with birds like today's hunt but it can also be a lot of work for just a few. But that's what keeps us coming back year after year. Good luck to all you waterfowlers as the season progresses here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, if you've watched the show over the last month or so, you may remember us sitting down with the anglers of the El Sable, learning more about the camp grayling expansion and how that would affect us as sportsmen. We're going to visit with our friends from MUCC to learn a little bit more about that. And in a couple of weeks, we're going to be sitting down with the National Guard to learn more about that from their perspective. But it's always good to see how this all affects Michigan sportsmen. Since 1937, MUCC has been uniting citizens to conserve, protect, and enhance Michigan's natural resources and our outdoor heritage. And we do, do this through a variety of ways, communication, education, policy and advocacy, and also getting out in the field to help restore our habitats. Currently, we are reviewing a proposal that was submitted by the National Guard to the Department of Natural Resources to expand Camp Grayling in northern Michigan by 162,000 acres. MUCC is requesting that the DNR deny this current proposal. It's too much and too big with not enough details to make us comfortable to even move forward with the review. This is of utmost concern for the general sportsmen and women out there, both who reside in the area, but also those that take advantage of public recreation opportunities in northern Michigan. If you live around or utilize these lands, you probably already know the impact that Camp Grayling has had on your daily access and when they're conducting their training activities. What this might do is on this 162,000 acres is not only impact the fish and wildlife that are there, but also close off public access during certain times of the year. Public access is of course important to all of us Michigan sportsmen, but really who even pays for the review was also something that Amy talked about. So one of the concerns of MUCC is actually the cost of the public review of this. The reason I say that is because we're going to spend the next year, if they decide to go forward with this review, reviewing these parcels, looking for species of greatest conservation need, threatened and endangered species, potential purchased lands that might be within this 162,000 acre footprint. And that's gonna take a lot of staff time. And unfortunately, or fortunately maybe for sportsmen and women, the Department of Natural Resources staff who day in and day out work to conserve our fish and wildlife and manage those habitats are gonna be taken away from their day-to-day -day work to be able to conduct this review. And that's before we've even decided to lease the grounds at all. Additionally, if there are any purchased lands within the footprint of the 162,000 acres, they would have to be removed from the proposal because it would actually be a diversion of federal funds. Uh, we would be in violation of our Pittman-Robertson legislation because we're now using these lands that were bought and paid for by hunters and anglers and for the purpose of fish and wildlife conservation for another purpose. So that's a big concern for us as well. 
the time of the biologist to review. They are also paid by that same Game and Fish Fund and Pittman Robertson funds. So we would have a concern about using our time, our dollars from a hunter and angler perspective to pay for this review that is going to benefit the general public. Certainly we don't think it's an appropriate use of our funds. We think it should be, if it is going to be a public good, it should be borne upon the public, the general public, uh, to pay for that kind of review and also to compensate for that lost access. After talking with so many people about this proposed expansion, one of the things that's really interesting is there doesn't seem to be a real hard timeline on when a decision is going to be made. At this point in time, we don't really have a good timeline. These kinds of things take an inordinate amount of time, partly because of the public input process, which we very much support. But if the DNR does decide to go forward with a review of the parcels, that could take upwards of a year as well. At the same time, the National Guard is going to have to do their own environmental impact statement and review process as well. So that's going to take an additional amount of time. Whether those timelines are run in parallel or separately, I'm not sure. But certainly it will be a long time before a lease is signed. So I think there is a lot of opportunity for the public to engage in this issue still. Throughout the summer, the DNR has been collecting public comments on this proposal. You can still do that. The timeline has not officially closed. And there are also additional opportunities. If you live or have a place up north, there is probably a local township official, a county board of commissioners that might want to hear from you about your feelings on this proposal. Thanks so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stay tuned in upcoming weeks. On next week's show, we'll show you what happened out on the Liberty Hunt, which is the youth and disabled hunters that happened last weekend. You won't want to miss that. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out online. 
Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is a good way to kind of keep track of us. Of course, you can do that on our website, social media platforms, YouTube. There's lots of places that you can be checking us out if you missed part of this week's show or you want to see something again. Make sure you are joining us over the next several weeks. We are getting into more and more of the hunting seasons. There's good fall fishing happening. So just get out and enjoy this time here in our great state. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to fire away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land, I am a Michigan man. From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie and back again, I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man, that's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land, I Peninsula, you can bury me on 